right and down there. Or even change it all together. And so I just soon talk to somebody. You know, uh, and and the cell phones, the Siri can't understand our language. I don't know if you've picked up on that. But they don't understand uh, Appalachian or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm an Appalachian American. How's that? I'll be hyphenated American. <laughs> but uh, talk about uh, going somewhere or doing something, and I'll say, well, go ask your wife and let me know what she says, <laughs> and then we'll light it up. But I just pick on him about that. But anyway, uh, have no other gods before me. It speaks uh, that one and the second one also, uh, uh, or this verse number four says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. God's a jealous God. and But more importantly, he knows the heart of men and our tendencies about things, and especially about worship. And we've had to be taught how to worship. That's something that... Uh, uh, it comes natural only to a certain degree. And God expects His youngins to worship Him. And He desires us to worship Him. He desired these people to worship Him, but not in just any old way they wanted to. He uh, wanted uh, uh, worship done His way. And, and He's got every right to say that. Uh, I work with a fellow that tells me he can worship God anywhere he wants to. And I say, well... We'll get a little free time on one of the other six days a week and you try to prove that to me. Let me know if God shows up when you tell him to show up because it's convenient for you this day or it's convenient for you out here instead of in God's house. You know, prove that to me. Uh, that's the way some folks think though. But uh, it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath, or that is in water under the earth. Not leaving it up to man to visualize what God is, to visualize what God may look like, to visualize anything in their own mind. He's saying, hey, I am the I am. And this is how you, this is who I am. He says, uh, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage, house of bondage. Hey, go no further. Just take him at his word that that's who he is and go no further. Don't think that he looks a certain way, set up a statue or make something with your own carnal, sinful, filthy hands that may represent uh, God Almighty. He's not into that. He's saying, no, you don't do that. That's not the way it's set up. Uh, all kinds of religions have things of that nature. Uh, and, uh, you know, to make things look, uh, you, they've got to see something before they worship it. Well, where's faith in that? Uh, that, takes, that takes faith out of the equation if it's by sight. And so uh, God's laying out some things here. You remember uh, the story of uh, the folks uh, puffing up and telling Aaron to make them an image that they can worship. And uh, he caves in. He went and got all their gold. It's something that they figured was the most precious thing. Well, don't do God any favors. Don't care if you make it out of gold or platinum or... Or a matchstick. You can make it out of the best thing earth as you could find on this earth. And it still don't match up uh, to God Almighty. Yeah. Uh, as far as His holiness. Yeah. His holiness is not uh, measured on earthly things. It's Amen. not measured on things that we can manufacture in our minds. Uh, so, uh, he says, uh, no graven imp. You, interestingly enough, when they when they made that golden calf and then Aaron had to explain what had happened, he tried to throw it off on the people and too. Well, I don't know. I just wadded it all up and out come his calf, you know. I'm paraphrasing there. Uh, in other words, don't blame me. This is just what come out. Uh, that's just how people are. Uh, well, uh, let's see here. I've got some notes here. Some of them, it looks like I've even scribbled out, so. That might have meant I'd, I didn't like what I wrote down there or something. But uh, the second commandment refers to the worship we are to render to the Lord our God. Uh, he's, he, he expects us to worship Him. Uh, verse 5, you get a good picture of that. He says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. 
For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Boy, what a statement. Sounds pretty serious. Amen. Sounds like God, as far as worship is concerned, from his people to him, he takes that very serious. It's not something that's an afterthought. It's not, well, if you've got a little time, I'd like for you to worship me. If you can fit me into your schedule when you're not trying to make a living, uh, I'll take what you've got left over. Give me a little time. No, it sounds like it's pretty serious. Uh, hey, I've had, I've had a, uh, well, the place I work at now. Uh, first nine years I was there, I, I had to work on Sundays. Sunday, uh, didn't get off till probably somewhere around, uh, uh, well, I made it on Sunday night. Let me just say that. And sometimes I made it there during the day, but I had a uniform on. Uh, not too many. And I doubt I work with anybody that watches this program, so uh, it don't make no never mind anyhow. Uh, it bothered me that my job hindered me from being in God's house on Sunday morning. Sure, there was Sunday night. Sure, there was Wednesday night. Uh, but I'm a church man yeah. and, and yeah. don't care to tell you that. And I, I, I love to be in God's house around you people. Uh, this, is my, this is my crowd. This Amen. is the kind of people I like to hang around. I love you and appreciate each and every one of you. And I, I, I learn from, from you. And I, I appreciate your walk and your testimony. It means something. If nobody else ever tells you, it means something to me. Amen. Uh, to see folks show up in each and all the services and be faithful to God and to his house. And uh, that means something to me if nobody else ever tells you that. But, uh, you know, uh, it, sometimes them jobs can get in the way. And we got to make a living. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, you know, if, if you don't, if, if you shouldn't, if you ain't going to work, you ought to eat. Uh, and I'm sure it's not worded that way in the scripture, but again, I speak Appalachian. So, uh, man shouldn't, don't work, he don't need to eat. Now, then there's that crowd that look for jobs that take them away from God's house on purpose. Yeah. Well, I can't help it, I've got to work. You know, well, yeah, I know that. Uh, there's jobs out there uh, that people can work. It may not be what you're necessarily looking for. It may not be at the wage you think you're, uh, that yeah. you're due. But uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, early retirement? Building up your bank account? Or having God be pleased with you. Uh, when I miss out on these services here, uh, I'm fully aware that I am missing something that I can't get at home or anywhere else. And uh, I love that. Uh, my Uncle Darren don't know uh, any of the seven days a week. He don't know what the order they are, what day it is, but he knows Sunday. And, he, you know, uh, Sunday was church day as he called it Wednesday was prayer meeting day what day is today Darren? prayer meeting that's how he said prayer meeting didn't know how to read a calendar but he knew what the days were and you talk about somebody that really missed out if he wasn't going to church yes. uh, if something come up and he was a sickly youngin that he couldn't go and um, grandmother stayed with him at the house that's all she heard out of his mouth was why he couldn't go to church I mean it'd drive her just about crazy and uh, but that's that's how he was. Uh, Lord God, rest of us would be like that. You know what? Uh, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Uh, talking about any kind of graven image or any 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 other thing that you may think represents God or uh, any kind of supreme being. Uh, they had a bunch on uh, the news not too long ago. Uh, bowing their knees and showing people this is what uh, now they did this for a, a different reason uh, but all the more reason uh, uh, they were being uh, just trying to uh, let me try to word this a certain way <laughs> I'd even go on record and say, if you can't stand for the American flag and you claim to be American, you need to be knocked down. 
Amen. 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 Somebody ought to knock you down if you can't stand for that flag. That flag means something. It means something to me. We don't worship the flag by any means. But there's a certain pride that goes along with being an American that God placed you in a country where you're free. That God placed you somewhere where you don't have to hide behind something to worship Him or, or, uh, or hide in general. Uh, I love the United States of America. And uh, if it gets to the point to where my job's on the line, if I don't bow down to a certain bunch uh, or, or, or take a knee, kneel because I'm upset about a certain crowd being treated a certain way, so I'm going to kneel for this flag. What'd that flag do? What's that flag represent? It represents freedom. What's that got to do with uh, while that crowd's kneeling down to begin with? So, all right. We're in agreement there. He ended up with the saying he had visited the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That's a big bunch of people. There was at least two million people right here. Verse number six says, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Boy, what a contrast that is. Here we're talking about a couple of generations that hate him. And then he says, unto the thousands that love me. Boy, how sad, how sad that is. Uh, how sad that is. I, I, I wish it'd be the other way around. But uh, Matthew seven fourteen says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few. Thousand being the few. Couple of generations being a vast multitude. Uh, well, that's sad. Uh, verse 5 also speaks that second command. It concerns the manner of worship. That it be with all possible reverence and seriousness. Boy, it's a serious thing when you step in these doors here. In this sanctuary. Uh, we ought to train our youngins. It, it ain't. Just something to kill time for a couple hours. Well, we got to be here. This is serious business. Uh, I, I was taught that at a very young age. I teach my youngins that at a very young age. Uh, I have no problem with correcting my kids or uh, uh, doing what I see fit as how the Lord has me to raise them. If it embarrasses them, it embarrasses him. I have no problem with that. Amen. That's not to be mean or, or anything. Uh, so, hey, sometimes I embarrass them on purpose because it's fun. You know, I embarrassed my daughter at high school not too long ago. I'll get her to let you tell that. But I'm still laughing over that when I had perfect opportunity. And it didn't hurt nothing. But uh, I'm still laughing on that. And that's over a year ago. But uh, worship. God's house and worshiping Him, that's a, that's a, it ought to mean something uh, to these folks. And God's letting them know this, don't, this is serious business. Uh, it's serious. Verse 6, uh, verse 7, uh, the third commandment says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Even this deals with how to, how to, how them, and, I, and I've got in here we as well, because uh, we're not saved by keeping these commandments by any means, but uh, uh, this, uh, these commandments, just as he said in uh, uh, verse 2, let you know who he is and exactly who we are. If we had roved to a place where we would never commit a sin and never done anything wrong in our entire life from birth to death, then there'd be no need for this law. But guess what? All have come sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, three-letter word, describes the entire human race from Adam on down. And so we're blanketed under that. Uh, Says. So uh uh, this, the third commandment deals with how we're to treat even the name of God. 
not to use his name as an idle word or a cuss word or even a by word. Even the name of God is to be uh, given reverence to. Uh, I don't, I've done a little bit of studying on this, probably not enough, I guess, but enough to spark my interest. I don't, when, uh, when the, they were, uh, folks were pinning down scripture, I've often heard uh, from a couple of different sources that when they came to the name of God and they used a scribe, they didn't have number two pencil, uh, they didn't have a fountain pen or anything of that nature, uh, but when they came, when they're writing things down and they came to the name of God in whatever form it was there, God or Jehovah, whatever, uh, when they came to his name, they done away with the, the instrument they was using and they grabbed another one that had never been used at all. They wrote his name and then they set it to a side. Even his name wasn't worthy to use uh, a, a scribe that had been pinning down other words because his name is separate from all other words on the earth. That sounds good to me. I don't know if it's true, but I take that. That shows some reverence right there, folks, back in this day had for God and even his name. Even his name is precious. And he's got uh, uh, tons of names that we can think of. And they've wrote different songs about him uh, and the Lord our Savior. And they're all wonderful. And I love to hear every one of them. Uh, but it's not an idle word. It's, it's not just a, a name that you throw out there. It's, uh, it's not a name like Larry or, or Desi. Uh, Bless God, that's God's name. And you ought to have some respect for it. Uh, uh, verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh, again, we're dealing with the nation of Israel here in the Old Testament. He's given them a law. And uh, there's been all kinds of people down through the years that, that try to booger this verse up and try to apply it to something that it need not be applied to. Uh, you know, when, uh, well, let me just read here for a second. Verse 9 says, Six days shalt thou labor, because God describes it uh, pretty well right here. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. He understands that folks need to make a living. He understands that folks, in order to eat, they've got to work and labor. Uh they didn't have angles back in this day where they just go down there and grab a can of uh, Vienna sausages or something. Uh, you, you had to work for it. You, it. It was your effort that was had to be done. It says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. Simply put, uh, there was a time, this is still talking about worship. There was a time where God says, all right, you cut, you cut everything off that you're doing throughout the week. You're scrapping to make a living. You're scrapping to put this back and, and uh, to have a little something. You're doing this on your own might. But there is a day in this week you're not to do any of that. There's a day in this week you shut it all off. And you even think nothing about the Lord thy God. Think of me. Worship me. This day is dedicated to me. Uh, when it says God rested on the seventh day, it didn't mean uh, that uh, he was so tired that he had to take a breather, as I've heard some people say. Under the Lord. Read your Bible once in a while. Amen. I mean, my goodness. Uh, it simply means that he took a stop from what he had already created. Uh, a reflection time, if you please. Uh, verse uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 27 says, And he said unto them, He is the Jesus. And he said unto them, The Sabbath, this is in the New Testament, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Amen. Uh, I, there's a church not too far from where our plan is and, and they congregate on Saturday there and uh, not Sunday we congregate here on Sunday we don't call this a Sabbath 
This is the Lord's day. When Jesus came, and there's a whole lot more into that that it may not even have time to get to. Uh, we worship here on Sunday, the first day of the week. Uh, we start our week with Him, bless God. Uh, that's not to say that this is the only day you have anything to do with God Almighty. Uh, see, it's a, you can teach this stuff and still apply it to our lives today uh, without messing all that up. Uh, what about this book is something else, ain't it? Amen. God's law is something else. Some folks think because they're uh, under the grace age that they have no dealings with the law whatsoever. They don't even need to look at it. But boy, it's good to read and study this. There, I made my son read this not too long ago. Uh, just as a reminder of who he is yeah. and who he is. Yeah. Every once in a while, it do us good just to read this. That we, God says, as your, as uh, I am your, the Lord your God, and this is how I want you to live. Yeah. These are my statutes. These are my principles. These are my commands. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to live to your own self. Uh, you're going to live for me, and this is how I want you to do it. Amen. And so I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, I just take him at his word. It says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all, all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Verse 12, dealing with uh, that second table we was talking about. This, uh, from here down, deals with uh, our obligation to others. Uh, there's no gray area in any of this, in, I feel. There's no, nothing to leave to the human imagination of how to interpret God's law. I think he lays things out here pretty simple. Uh, he goes into more detail when it talks about in the, the laws one through four because they're concerning him. I don't want you to miss anything. They're simple people, simple-minded people. People need instruction. I've got to tell my kids, there's two bags of trash here. I'll say, take a trash out. That don't work. i say, take both bags of trash out because surely to goodness, they'll leave one and say, well, you just said take a trash out. You'd say, which one? Why is that? That's their nature. Yeah. Call it lazy. Call it whatever you want. But that's man's nature uh, to say, well, you didn't give me enough instruction. Well, we've read so far about how you ought to deal with uh, how you ought to treat God and your obligation to Him Amen. and your obligation to worship Him and what a privilege that is yeah. that He yeah. goes into a whole lot more detail when concerning that. So uh, just in case you need it, it's there for you to read. It's there. Uh, no gray area there. I, I wish my youngins would just, I didn't have to tell them a thing. They'd get up and brush their teeth on their own, uh, tie their shoes on their own, comb their hair on their own, put on deodorant on their own, open the door before you try to walk out of it on their own, come in when it's raining. I wish they'd just made like that and you didn't have to tell them that kind of stuff. Wash your face off after they've got ketchup all over it. Uh, but they need instruction. And uh, it, it's almost like they may do some of that on purpose just so you'd tell them something. Well, I've always, I've always let them know hey, if you get to that state, if you get to that point, you, you're going to take what you get. Uh, if that's what you want from me, I'll surely dish it out. If you want specific instruction, I can do it. God's telling his youngins, I'm going to tell you exactly how to live for me. It's nothing in your mind that you could dream up or imagine that would make me pleased with you. He said it's you can't do that on your own. That's why I'm giving you these instructions. Amen. So how easy would they have had their life if they would have just, okay, I'll do what you say. And even today, how easy would our lives be if we just let loose and turn loose the things and say, all right, God, I'm through with trying to mess your things up. Yes. However you want it, that's how I'll do it. Uh, it's being submissive to His will, uh, not our own. So... Uh, verse 12 says honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee uh, this includes the esteem of them talking about your parents uh, shown in our conduct 
obedience to their lawful commands. Uh, also, submission to their counsels and their corrections. Uh, my kids are, are my kids. They're, they're not my friends. And I'm not saying that to be ugly or mean. Uh, I buddy around with them and, and do things with them and cut up and carry on, but they're, they're not uh, under the category of friends. Uh, that's the way I see it. Now, now, the other one down there may see things a little different. But uh, um, I say that for my own benefit because I don't want to get in the attitude, well, I can't correct him. He's, he's my buddy. He's my friend. And then on the other side of that, that youngin may say, well, he ain't going to do nothing to me. We're friends. We're buddies. Yeah. I'm Scott Free. Yeah. He ain't going to do nothing to me. We, just, we hung out just a few minutes ago. Uh, hey, we're human. I am. The youngins are. Don't think for one second that don't cross their mind. Uh, you'd have a whole lot better time correcting them from the get-go and just let them know, hey, we do things and pal around. But it's my laws. It's my house, and you will abide by my rules. Simple as that. Amen. Uh, that's, it may have been last night. I... Uh, talking about my son's haircut. My daughter messed his hair up a little bit. I'm getting to where I can't hardly see to do that anymore. And uh, she messed it up pretty good. I said, well, just leave it alone. It'll grow back out and we'll try to fix it. You know, it ain't no big deal. It's hair. All you got to do is wash it anyhow. It just gets dirty like everything else. Who you going to impress? You ain't going to school. Uh, who you, you wear a hat a lot of times anyhow. Where you, who you going to impress? But it was talking about his hairdo. I said, uh, "What do you just? What do you think of your haircut? You like the way I've been cutting it when I did it?" I guess. I said, "Well, uh, uh, would you like to carry it a different way or something?" He goes, I, "I don't know." I said, "Well, I just asked you that just to see what you'd say. You're gonna wear it how I tell you to. It's gonna be off your ears and off your neck. If you want to comb it, that's your problem. But but, but the rest of that." Uh, is coming off of there. It's off the ears and off the... You're going to represent what you are, which is a 12-year-old boy. Yeah. And uh, if you're... Uh, I'm not giving you that option, in other words. And he knows that stuff. But the more options you give youngins, boy, they'll take them and run. Yeah. When I was... When, uh, when we first started having youngins, I'd... Uh, well, I noticed that from... Me and my wife was first started courting. They'd, they'd, her, I'd go over there to eat, and her mom would have two or three different types of supper on the table. I said, my goodness, who all's coming over here? Well, it's just us. I said, let's see, one, two, three, four. And there's enough food here for three families. Who's going to eat all this? Well, uh, we like this, and Daddy likes this. And, and which, what do you want? I said, well, I, I just eat what you've made. And they said, well, we want to give you an option. I said, well, I'm sorry if I don't understand that, but I, that's new to me. When I was growing up, it was supper's ready, whatever supper was. My mom didn't say, well, would you like tacos or would you like, you know, the girls want tacos. How, it, now, he wants hamburgers. Now, I've got to make my little baby a hamburger because he don't like tacos. It was supper. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't ask. Amen. Because if you're a youngin, what you'd rather eat chocolate bars and stuff like that, things that wasn't good for you. The parents should know what's good for the youngin. Yeah. So there was no option there. And boy, that's taught me a lot in my Christian life growing up. Uh, I don't ask God what he's got in store for me and lets me pick and choose. He says, this is it. This is what you read. This is what you study. Not the... Uh, any other kind of version or translation, I want you to read and study this because this is my inspired word. Uh, you, you put the, you know, it, sheep ain't the smartest things in the world. You put a bunch of them in a room and you put four piles of food somewhere. Them things are going to starve out because they don't know which one to eat from. They've got too many options. They worry themselves to death. Well, maybe I'll eat this one. Well, maybe I'll eat this one. 
or let's just say it's one sheep, rather. That'd be a better scenario. One sheep, and he's got four different pies. He don't know which one he needs to eat from. They could all be the same. Maybe they're slightly different. Point is, is there's different options there for him. But before he lays into one, or two, or three, or four, he worries himself to death about it, and he ends up starving to death. Hey, they've got all these translations of God's precious word. Different ones that people, hey, if you don't like this, and try this. We want you to be happy. This is better understood. This is with the American language and things of that nature. Well, them's the folks, if they're not careful, because they're away from what God said I want you to feast on, they're starving out in the world. They're starving out scripturally. They're starving out spiritually. And so God help us to not starve out spiritually because without the holy divine scriptures, you will starve out spiritually. I guarantee it. There's no, you can't get away from that. You want to build up that inner man? This is the food that you give him. Yeah. It's, it's not a, a choice matter. Uh, God says, this is what I want you to have. My mom said, this is what you're going to eat. You either eat it or you do without. Yeah. And I can't remember a time that I did without. I may eat with a frown on my face. But uh, she knew that it was important for me to eat and it was her responsibility to know what would be good for me. It's God's responsibility to know what we need. What's good for us spiritually. And so that's why we feast out for this thing. And you'll never exhaust it. You'll never get to the point, if you're in tune with God, that you'll say, well, that just don't, that diet just don't fit me anymore. I won't try something else. I ain't found that. Uh, have you uns? I haven't found that. Let's move on. We're just about done. Thou shalt not kill. Boy, how plain is that? Uh, who cannot understand, thou shalt not kill. You say, well, what about all these wars and things? People, uh, I thought about, I'm already seeing folks lined up out there, and it's probably a good thing that I didn't expound on that in my notes because there's more than I could write in a day uh, when it comes to things like that. But this commandment requires... Uh, the spirit of kindness, the spirit of long suffering, and the spirit of forgiveness. Uh, I get mad at Brother Ray for something, and I just I ain't gonna deal with him no more. I just haul off and shoot him, do something to cause his life to cease. Uh, it's not like we're in a war and he's trying to uh, uh, fight against my family or or uh, uh, come into. Uh, Come and bring a fight over into my land. You know, uh, sometimes that's needed. Uh, we're not, God's not talking about that. He's talking about man's dealings with man, with his fellow man in these commandments here. He's talking about, that's what he's talking about. Uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory, thou shalt not kill. So it, in, in my little mind, it speaks that this commandment uh, requires a few things. It requires the spirit of kindness, long-suffering forgiveness. If you've got them things, I won't care. Yeah, that's right. I won't care if Ray backed into my fence and knocked it down, no. made some tire marks on my property. It'll only take me a year to grow that grass back. If I've got that in my heart, that ain't going to bother me. No. No. It won't cause me to want to kill him or cut his throat or something of that nature. I don't know if you has got any neighbors like that, but they people mean out in Swan Noah. I'm, I've, I've been a swan annoying my whole, about my whole life and I'm these mean people out there. <laughs> Ronnie knows who they are. He's probably one of them. <laughs> Amen. Verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, these seem elementary uh, if, as you read these. Well, everybody ought to know not to kill somebody and be nice to your parents and things of that nature. Well, do they? Uh, God wouldn't have put it in here if he didn't think folks needed simple instruction. Uh, it says, uh, this commandment says, we should be much afraid. Uh, I, says, I said, this, this is things that I've wrote down. Now you take, take it for what it is, but when I get a thought, my pen gets to moving. Uh, that's for me. Uh, I don't read everything I write in here. A lot of that's for me. It says, we should be much afraid of what defiles the body, of what 
as, as of what destroys the body. Whatever pollutes the imagination or to raise passions falls under this law. Uh, if it's going to... I worked with a fellow one time. This was an older gentleman. He said, well, there ain't nothing wrong with looking at, looking at another woman just as long as you don't act on it. I beg to differ. Uh, that's how things start. Uh, that's how things start. That's common sense to most people. But there's some folks say, well, because, hey, you did you just told me to take out trash. You didn't say take both of them. Hey, that's how, hey. We'll keep on and moving. Thou shalt not steal. Self-explanatory. It don't belong to you, don't take it. Right. Simple as that. There's no need to expound on that. That's common sense. Even the Appalachians can understand that. Uh, we'll move on here. Verse 16. Uh, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Uh, now when he's saying neighbor, he's not just saying somebody that lives right next door to you. Uh, this is you, anybody that's not you. Uh, it concerns our neighbors, naturally, and our own good name. Uh, I start spreading things about Ray just because he might be getting a little ahead of me and I don't like it, and I want to bring him back down to bring myself up. I don't know if you know anybody like that, but I know of a place right now that's full of them. And uh, I tend to stay away from folks like that. And, and uh, I want to be checked up if I ever get in that situation. Because as I'm doing that to Ray, this brother right here is listening to that and saying, what kind of feller is he to run him down like that? Yeah. Hey, do you, you know, you know, Ray don't change his socks every day. Do you know that? If you're wondering what that smell is, it's Ray. He, he don't change his socks all the time. You believe that? You believe, let me find somebody else to tell about him. It don't matter how big or how small the thing is. Uh, it sounds pretty elementary, uh, but uh, these folks needed instruction like that, and so do we. Verse 17, I'll try to hurry. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. If it ain't yours, covet is to uh, have a desire for somebody else's things. Uh, you ought to be thankful for what you have yes, amen. and be thankful that Ray's got what he's got. Amen. Be thankful Larry's got what he's got. Amen. amen. Be thankful that I, you will, I ought to be thankful yuns has got what you've got because when I'm thinking along those lines, I can stop and think, boy, look what God's done for them. Not only has he done that for me, but look what he's done for them. Why would I want what they've got? God says this is theirs. And then I can sit back and think, well, why would I need what they've got? Look what he's given me. I mean, it's a multitude of stuff. I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, you can't count it. You can't put it all in a bucket and count it. It, it. it makes you think and ponder on what God's already done for you. Amen. And when you get to that point, I personally believe you'll get your mind off of other people's things. Amen. 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 What about that? We got through every bit of that. Only went a little bit over. 